No shortage of Americans in the Bundesliga to discuss. Why don't we start with Weston McKinney. Got himself a goal on the midweek for Schalke against Fortuna Dusseldorf. Unfortunately, Dusseldorf scored twice in the next 15 minutes as Schalke lost yet again. But for McKinney, it was his second goal in just his last four Bundesliga appearances. To discuss the many Americans playing in the Bundesliga, we welcome back Jan Arga Fjortov. We welcome in Taylor Twelman. Guys, let's start with McKinney and Jan. I'll start with you. Schalke have been terrible how much of that has been down to the central midfielder McKinney? No, not at all. So I think he's one of the biggest talent there is around in the Bundesliga. But as you're saying, Schalke is terrible. So even to have a good touch and to get a goal for that team, make you a candidate for Ballon d'Or. Uh, I mean, Schalke is terrible. But I, I love McKinney. What a, what a good guy. What a good story about his, his career. And he's just destined, you know, to go all the way in uh, international football. Taylor, are you as optimistic about McKinney? I am uh, because he's still young. However, there's a little bit too many up and downs for me in his game. And what I mean by that, and I actually sat down with him a couple weeks ago on, on my show Banter, and I asked him, what is your best position? And at times, see, Jan's right. He's an exciting player when he's allowed to go forward, when he's got freedom to run, when he's often the third or fourth attacker inside the 18. But Seben Jan, truth be told, at times, David Wagner has been playing him as a six, and it doesn't suit him. Too often, he's given the ball away in precarious positions. Uh, he's lackadaisical at times, ball watching, defending. But when he's more of a number eight, when he's got freedom to kind of fill in the gaps, run around, he does have a special ability to get forward. And I think when he comes to the United States men's national team, that only works if Tyler Adams is playing as a six, how Greg Berhalter figures out those two's key. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. In Interesting terms of, you should uh, mention. A bit out of position, that, that I agree on you. I and mean, sometimes you have to depend on what kind of manager you set on you. I would love to have more gold points from him as well. But I mean, the basic got to be that you play in your perfect position. Now, now we'll see how long David... David Wagner will stay in his job. Schalke came out today and said they supported him. And, for, and, the, and we all know that is the first sign of firing him. <laughs> Jan, Taylor mentioned Tyler Adams for Leipzig. Obviously, they've had a rough restart to the Bundesliga, but he's been in and out of the starting lineup. What's his reputation among Bundesliga critics? I think, first of all, uh, Red Bull or Rasenball Leipzig, as they want to call themselves, uh, have been a lot under attack in Germany. But there is one thing good about them is that their, their, their um, ability to find good players. And Adams is in there. Uh, it's very hard to play in that RB Leipzig team. I mean, there, I mean, except for three or four others, I can see him play for a lot of uh, different clubs in the Bundesliga. I knew we were going to discuss this today and I called a couple of sport directors who would take him straight away. And I think there's a good example of Cunha, who, uh, were at, uh, who was, of course, at RB Leipzig who, and is now doing brilliantly at Hertha Berlin. So I, t I think Taylor Adams will... will I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic on behalf of the Americans, but I think that, that Adams will go his way. And, but it's very hard to get into that uh, RB Leipzig uh, team at the moment. Taylor, the question with Tyler Adams kind of has to be his position, mm -hmm. right? We see him with Leipzig, and oftentimes we see him as a right back. Yeah, I, I'm so glad, though, Jan brought that up, because when you do speak to sporting directors all around Germany, Tyler Adams' name is brought up right away. The second part of that is, I'm not so really sure he's a wingback, or I'm not totally sure he's a fullback on that side. But truth be told, he's on the radar of a lot of clubs, and the biggest reason why is he's got an engine, he's smart, uh, he's a very natural leader. We saw that with the New York Red Bulls. We've seen it with the U.S. men's national team. This week, I sat with Tyler Adams on banter, and I flat out asked him, what's your best position? It took him a half a second. He said, I'm a six. I'm a natural six. I fill the gaps. I'm very good at getting in the tackle. Now, reading this performance that he just had recently at Hertha Berlin, we saw moments where he struggled 1v1 defending. I'm not going to read too much into that at this moment after a global pandemic and a break. But he is on an in-between spot as that right back. Now, the question is, and I think Jan's heard this from sporting directors as well, is at the highest level, at the highest, highest international level, he may be a right back because those sixes are very good in tight spaces, and that's where Tyler Adams needs to improve. 
Next American to focus on, John Brooks of Wolfsburg. Now, this guy divides opinion, but over the last couple games, Jan, we've seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kai Havertz. We've seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Erling Haaland. And he's done pretty well, hasn't he? Well, he's one of those defenders, and I'm, some, some years since I retired now, but he's one of those defenders you don't want to meet, actually. And he has had a bit, bit problem with, well, a lot of the Wolfsburg going from Labadia to, to Glasner, of course. But as you're saying, he's one of those reliable at his best. And he's been good for Do Wolfsburg. And, and what a game they had now against Leverkusen. That was, that was the uh, surprise of the round, of course, winning uh, in Leverkusen. And Wolfsburg, is, there's something going on there. And uh, Brooks will, of course, be a major part, part in that. So uh, one of those reliable, good defenders that, you like, like you said, uh, Erling Haaland, my fellow countryman, he, he couldn't get a touch, more or less, against uh, Wolfsburg. So that speaks for himself and for, for him. And also, like you said, Kai Havertz scored four goals in two games. And, well, there was no, ch no money chances against Wolfsburg. Taylor, uh, you know it. U.S. fans, they've seen the John Brooks that can <laughs> shut down Erling Haaland. They've also seen the John Brooks that plays against Costa Rica in a 4 nothing. And that's the difficult part of John Brooks. That is the most difficult part. Now, quite honestly, Jan knows this as well, Zev. It's a, it's a nightmare being a center back because in the blink of an eye, you could have 89 great minutes, and if you slip up or you lose your man, you're the GOAT, and you understand that. But what Jan hasn't understood uh, understand yet is what John Brooks has been for the United States. He scores a goal in the World Cup. They win and beat Ghana. And then, like you said, he's an absolute disaster or... He's unfit, and that's been my biggest concern with John Brooks is, Seb, how often has he been called in in key moments, in big moments, when you need to set the tone in the camp and you've got a center back playing in a top five league in the world regularly? You've got a guy that has potential shutting down the best center forward in the world, maybe, in that argument, and Holland, and then he shows up and he's injured. So if the United States men's national team is going to have any success in World Cup qualifying and ultimately in the World Cup, John Brooks has to be playing at this level and not the level we saw against Costa Rica where they lost 4-0. Next up on the list, Josh Sargent. Now, you can't talk about a striker without talking about his team. Jan, how bad are Werder Bremen right now? Well, two last games, they've done well. They haven't conceded goals, which is a good start. And I'm sitting in the studio with a, with a Werder Bremen legend, Rune Bratzett, sometimes. And he's got a lot of furious of how they're doing. Sargent got it all uh, in terms of physical presence and everything. But it's, of course, very hard. I, I've been around for some different leagues playing for, for teams who could go down. And that is the hardest thing for a striker because you, they, you don't create chances and Werder Bremen at the moment don't create chances. Having said that, I asked uh, the, the sport directors today, is this a guy, I, I don't know in, as, as good as you guys doing because you, sorry I didn't see the Costa Rica game with Brooks, but uh, when, when, when I asked them, should he go down with Werder Bremen? Is that good for a kid? No, 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 no. Move away, straight away, because this guy got a potential to play, play in the Bundesliga. He just needs to play in a better team where he gets more chances. And it, it's quite hard for a, for a guy who loves to score goals playing for Werder Bremen at the moment. Even Lewandowski would struggle. Taylor, you agree? Should he stick around or not stick around if Werder Bremen do go down? No, I'm 100% with Jan, because when you do speak to these sporting directors, you have to remember, Seb, and a lot of people in the United States have already forgotten this about Josh Sargent, but he had multiple, multiple big-name clubs going after him. Now, I thought it was a little bit of a surprise that he chose Werder Bremen, and then Josh Sargent tells me, well, he goes there because they said he was going to play right away. Well, obviously, we see why, because like Jan said, I don't care who you are up front. That team defends with 10 players behind the ball at all times, and they don't create any chances. So, yeah, he's got three goals, two assists in 20-some-odd games. But what's more concerning to me is this, is too often I see Josh Sargent playing deep into the midfield, dropping into gaps. If he's going to score goals, which is what he's paid to do, which is why everyone in the United States is excited about his potential, he's got to go play the other way. You don't see Lewandowski filling in those gaps. So whether you're an American or not, you've got to play like a goal scorer in number nine. And that's where I think this learning process is, is there. 
But to add on to Jan, I spoke with about four or five sporting directors in the last month in Germany. Every single one of them said we'd take Josh Sargent right now. Taylor, what about Gio Reyna? We've done it before, from Freddie Adu to Christian Pulisic. Why shouldn't U.S. fans be over the moon about this kid? Any reason? No, the, uh, G- Gio's special. If, if Jan probably didn't see it, but we've got a morning program here in the United States, Good Morning America, and he was on with the return of the Bundesliga, and he spoke to Robin Roberts and company, and you would have thought he was 25, 26, 27. Very composed, very mature. Now, the Under-17 World Cup was a disappointing World Cup from his perspective, from the United States' perspective, but it, it, it's difficult to read into just that tournament. But what he's done in his time with Dortmund, how Dortmund has handled him, uh, they, they keep reminding people, you know, slow down, it's going to come. He's special. He's got the technical ability. We saw the goal he scored in the, in the Day of Bay Pokal game. So he's got the ability to be a special player. He needs to play regularly. I think he's going to get an opportunity to do that. Um, but I love the fact that he's at Dortmund because Dortmund's doing the right thing by a lot of their young players. Jan, a lot of American fans think he might be the next big thing, potentially a, a world superstar. In Germany, do they think he has that kind of ceiling? Yes. And one of the reasons is why, why did Holland go to Dortmund? Because he wants to develop as a football player. Why is Reina at the same pl- place? Because you know Dortmund know their stuff. They, are, they have people around. They have a coach called Favre at the moment. I'm not sure how long that will last. But they got Sebastian Kehl, who is a, a symbol of his generation. You have Sork, you have Summer, who is, they are all hanging around. And they will tell this kid, just be patient. Just be patient. Have a look at the players we have developed. Reina is at the best place he can be in the whole world at the moment to develop. And that is all up to him. The club will be patient with him. I'm very excited for this player. I'm, I envy USA that you have that kind of talent. And we have one 19-year-old there as well. So this is the great place to be for young talents at the moment. All right, the last player on this list. I think it's safe to say we, uh, we saved the best for last year. Timmy Chandler. What do we make of Timmy <laughs> Chandler? Taylor Tolman, I'll, I'll start with you here. The U.S. doesn't have the deepest player pool. Here's a guy who's not just playing but contributing in the Bundesliga. Is there any way back into the U.S. men's national team for Timmy Chandler? There has to be. You know, and we're going to hear from other pundits in the United States that will tell you, no, no, you form is a fallacy and you don't need to do. No, 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 no. What, what are you talking about? When you're a country like the United States of America and you don't have the deepest pool of players, Seb, like you just said, and you need anyone and everyone that is at the top form, top shape, then absolutely. Now, listen, many people in Germany don't understand this. But Timmy Chandler wasn't the best in the locker room and coming into a situation where he was a German-American and rubbing a lot of the current players the wrong way. But this is a different regime. That time is over. And here's a guy that's got, what, five goals in his last, what, eight or nine games? Some of these off the bench? I don't care who you are. You're the United States of America. You failed to qualify for the World Cup in 2018. You can't be picky with players that are in form. You just can't. Jan, that's just it. Suddenly, Timmy Chandler scoring goals. What's going on? Well, I'm very, very happy for Eintracht Frankfurt that we got him at the moment. He's a, he's a great lad, and I, I agree with, uh, on you, with you because sometimes you kind of get this th- thing that a, a player is finished an international career because you're out some games. But if you are producing like Chandler is doing at the moment, as he did in the last round when he came in and saved us, and I have to say us because I'm very worried for my former club, Eintracht Frankfurt. They're letting him goals for fun, scoring that 3-3 goal. Uh, what a great guy to have around. He understands the Bundesliga and he's playing in the top five league. And I must say, if USA have got so many players that you can g- go away from a player that understands and scores in the top five, then I must say again, I'm jealous of you. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.